Greetings, this is Chris Ralph, and I'm going to tell a little bit about an amazing Australian adventure that I went on. Back in September of 2011, I went on a six-week-long prospecting tour across Western Australia with my friend Steve Hirschbach, who uh, is from the United States here. And when we went to Australia, we were hosted by the famous Australian prospector, Jonathan Porter. Now, here's a map of Australia. We were to be prospecting in Western Australia. Um, that was our plan. We flew from Los Angeles International first to Melbourne, or Melbourne, as the uh, Australians say, and then from there to Perth. And then in Perth, we kind of got started and headed north uh, out of uh, Perth into the outback. So our starting port was Perth. And Perth is a west-facing port town on the Indian Ocean. It's funny, the first morning I was there, I uh, just, it felt so familiar. I mean, there were, of course, eucalyptus trees all over because that's, they're native to Australia, but there were also citrus trees and other tr palm trees and things that I was very familiar with. And so I asked uh, one of the guys there what the latitude of this town was, and it turns out it's just about the same latitude as Los Angeles, and it's westward facing into the Indian Ocean, whereas Los Angeles faces west into the Pacific Ocean. So there's actually a very, very high similarity to the uh, just feel of the two towns between uh, Perth and uh, Los Angeles, Los Angeles being on the north part of the equator and Perth being south of the equator. Um, the first day we were there, uh, the local one of the local prospecting supply stores, Reed's, gave us a wonderful barbecue send-off, and a, a lot of the local prospectors uh, gathered there, and we talked to them. It was just an amazing time. Um, and uh, here the is is myself in the middle, and Steve, and then the uh, the owner of Reed's. And interestingly, a couple of years ago, I met him again in Las Vegas. He had come to Las Vegas for a, a mine lab uh, company meeting. Here we are. We uh, met at the government office first uh, just to check things out. Uh, the government of Australia and the government of Western Australia have a, a very different method of claim staking than, of course, is present in the United States, but it's still a very efficient and interesting system, so we took a look at some maps to see where claims were located out in our area. This was our first camp out in the outback. We set up uh, the tent that's off a little bit uh, from on the, uh, the right-hand side of the photo that's off a little bit in the distance. That tent is mine. Um, and then Jonathan has his his rig and stuff set up in the main part of, of camp. It worked out really well. It was just a beautiful area. It was amazingly flat, though. Uh, there were some hills in the distance, but uh, just I'm used to a, a very uh, mountainous and hilly uh, terrain where I prospect for gold here in the United States and, and uh, even in western other western states. And this was uh, amazingly flat by comparison. We were out quickly detecting for gold, and uh, I was using a, a Mine Lab uh, GPX 5000, and um, that was the most current detector at the time. And it was just a, a great machine, and it worked well in the Australian land uh, and with the mineralization and ironstone and other things that we encountered. Now, there were tracks off through the, the outback that seemed to lead in almost every direction. And, you know, uh, Jonathan had a lot of uh, experience in the area. Uh, but I would look at these tracks and think, you know, how do you know where they go? Where do they head? Uh, you could do a lot of just driving around and exploring. We were quickly on to Nuggets because, uh, like I say, Jonathan was very experienced and knew the area very well. And uh, it wasn't long, and we were picking up pieces of gold uh, with our detectors. It had been a wetter than normal season that year, and uh, wildflowers were just spectacular. Uh, not just yellows, but there were uh, lavenders and, and all kinds of other colors. It was just really gorgeous. Um, although the terrain is pretty flat, there are hills and other things that uh, make a beautiful scenery there in Western Australia. 
Again, as I mentioned, uh, I just wasn't used to the very flat country for detecting. I mean, even uh, a hill like this, which rises only a few tens of feet over the, the distant terrain, was uh, an unusual occurrence almost. It, it was some very, very flat country. But yet, uh, there was there was nuggets here, and there's no question about it. And you'd wander out there and see bits of quartz in with the ironstone, and, and you knew that you were in gold country. It was a very quiet area. We were out in the middle of nowhere. And so uh, the sunsets were beautiful and quiet. Uh, we spent some time looking around uh, at some old workings. There, here's uh, some old workings, old uh, turn of the century workings from uh, more than a hundred years ago that were next to an open pit. Uh, the old timers apparently found the mineralization and uh, further exploration showed a larger ore body that was mined, I think, in the 1980s by open pit methods. Most of our digging was in flat terrain, but some of it uh, was uh, along a creek bed. This doesn't look much like a creek bed, but there is a drainage here that goes through, and uh, there, there was bedrock exposed. Normally, in, in such gentle terrain, I'm, I'm used to having deep... Uh, a deep water and deep soils that, uh, that bury everything but uh, we were out in a, a creek bed and there was certainly gold in it uh, here's a nugget patch that I, I show people sometimes just to sh give an example of what a nugget patch there in Australia looked like you can see how generally flat this is um, in the foreground uh, there's some barren spots these are places where people swept aside the gravel on the surface to dig out nuggets there was actually quite a bit of gold recovered here and then in the near distance is, is from white rocks and the white rocks were bits of quartz or, or chunks of quartz boulders and things and that there was actually no gold in among the quartz it was over away from the uh, quartz running more or less parallel to it the australian uh Greenstone and ironstone geology was a very different geology than what I was used to, um, but uh, we learned to to understand it. And by the end of the trip, although it took a number of weeks, I was doing pretty well, uh, uh, scoping out little nuggets and things, uh, even even in patches that had been worked before. Here's another patch of nuggets that we worked. Uh, again, kind of flat, but uh, there was a good amount of gold here. Um, we were we were finding gold pretty much every day, usually uh, a number of nuggets. It varied, of course, some days better than others. But uh, here's Jonathan uh, picking out a pretty decent one out of the soil. Some more flat gold country in, in Western Australia. I got a number of little nuggets around the tree that uh, is in the background uh, from me. You might notice that I'm wearing a... Um, a screen over my face, a cover, uh, to keep the flies out. Uh, there were lots of flies in, in most areas, and they wanted to go for the the wet spots. They wanted to go for your eyes, to go up your nose, to go in your mouth if you opened your mouth, um, or in, and in your ears. And I just found that really distracting, so I put a, a cover over my, my hat and kept the flies at least out of my head. I didn't care if they were going to land on my arms or my back or my legs or something but uh, just out of my mouth there were some places where the soil was uh, very cemented and uh, interestingly it's not cemented by calcite which is what we encounter here in the west we call caliche uh, this material was cemented with silica because it was so old the ground uh, soil was so ancient it had been cemented with silica and uh, it could be broken by hand uh, with great difficulty. Instead, we used a little portable jackhammer to take up some of the ground. Um, I got a payoff, as you can see, and a nice little nugget that I had uh, dug up. Now, we did experience a little bit of bad weather once in a while, and uh, we'd go out for a time, but if it started to rain, we'd have to come back in and here we were sitting waiting for the rain to go away. Usually it didn't take more than the half an hour and the rain had, had dissipated. Here's a spot where we'd 
gotten set up and uh, it had rained and the rain was moving away we had a beautiful rainbow again more beautiful views uh, this is my tent uh, we just had some really gorgeous gorgeous scenery there we got our supplies in a little town known as Mikathera in Western Australia there was one one regular grocery store that had pretty much normal grocery store supplies but it was a small town and there wasn't a lot of business there um, we were restocking there and uh, we'd of course be there for the most of the day and uh, the place there that we stopped the uh, trailer park uh, had uh, chicken that they served deep fried chicken and it was pretty darn good most of the nuggets, especially the, what I got, were small. Although uh, Jonathan and Steve both got some bigger pieces. Uh, Jonathan's piece and Steve's piece both, I think, were around a half an ounce or better. So uh, there was some good-sized gold. As I mentioned, the flies were bad. This is really not a fair picture of the flies because there's only about 25 or 30 flies on Steve right there. There were times when I had a cloud of 300 flies around me. I mean, it, it, this is this is not a bad fly thing. Um, one day, Jonathan, we were eating lunch, and Jonathan had uh, chosen for lunch some sort of flavored tuna uh, dish, which seemed good. Um, but for whatever reason, that dish was a magnet for the flies. It wasn't more than just a limited number of seconds, and all the flies that were around Steve and I, and I think every fly within a few hundred yards was sucked onto Jonathan. And uh, they just went crazy over that uh, flavored tuna dish. And uh, Jonathan kind of went crazy in response, uh, pulling out a, a bunch of, uh, uh, fl you know, in insect repellent killer and uh, sprayed it all over. So we, we had a few laughs over that. We saw a lot of different uh, wild animals. There was emu, both adults and young, uh, young birds that we saw. Um, we saw these uh, birds that were a member of the parrot kind of family, uh, budgies. Um, we even saw nests of eggs here and there uh, on the ground. There was a, an eagle's nest near our camp, and, th and that nest was huge. It was probably four or five feet in diameter. And this is what what, what uh, was nesting there, a wedge, pair of wedge-tailed eagles. This isn't a picture that I shot, but this is the eagle, the type of eagle that was there. They looked similar a lot of ways to what we call a California golden eagle. We saw some wild goats. There are places where the, the goats have escaped. Uh, they're not native to Australia, but they've escaped, and they're uh, good enough to live on their own. This was actually in an open pit mine where they had wandered down to try and get some water. There was some water at the bottom of the mine. Um, while we were looking at them, Jonathan threw a rock down there just to kind of get them to move or disperse, and... He ended up hitting one right on the top of the head. And it's funny, you know, the goats, uh, the males fight each other by butting each other in the head. So their head is very hard and durable. And so when Jonathan hit one in the head accidentally, um, it just kind of shook it off and kind of stumbled for a second. And then everything was back to normal. Um, it was kind of funny. We, we got some good laughs out of that. Um, we saw some really large lizards, and you can see this lizard can stand up. Um, this is the same lizard. He was about 30 inches long, and we were told, no, that was just a little one, you know, that these lizards actually grow to be four or five feet long, more, more than a meter long. Uh, and so we never saw ones quite that huge, but uh, these are very large lizards. Um, we saw an echidna. Uh, Jonathan uh, showed it to us, and these are kind of the Australian version of a porcupine. As you can see, just like a porcupine, they ball up and um, 
and you don't want to touch those those uh, thorns. Jonathan got poked even through his leather gloves, not badly, but um, the the sharpness of the spines, even though this thing only weighs a few pounds, um, was able to poke him through the spines. Uh, I saw the most pathetic snake I've ever seen in my life. It was that night. It was down near freezing, and this poor snake was apparently very thirsty. He wanted the the water in uh, Jonathan's dog's bowl, and uh, the dog kept barking. And we went over and looked, and there was this snake. And so they picked up the snake with a stick and put him back out into the brush, where he could go off on his own and stay away from the dog's water. We saw termite mounds. The, the termites, there was some of these that were, this is only a couple feet tall, but some of these were six, eight feet or more tall, the giant uh, colonies of termites. And I actually looked at this, and these termites uh, look pretty much like little black sugar ants that we have here in the U.S., but apparently they are officially termites. We saw kangaroos, both the red type that you see pictured here and the, the gray type that you see pictured here. Didn't see any dingoes, but we heard them uh, in the evening. They would be barking at the moon or something like that. And uh, apparently they're a, quite a nuisance. Uh, they're not native. They were brought to the, the continent of Australia and then have escaped and basically gone back to being wild. Um, we saw wild camel footprints, but we never saw any wild camels themselves. Um, we did find gold. Like I say, we found gold every day pretty much uh, sometimes a few nuggets sometimes quite a few nuggets but uh, we pretty much found gold almost every day except like the days that we went into um, Mikathira for restocking and resupplying and washing clothes and that sort of thing here's Steve with his gold he got uh, a good amount and um, here's Jonathan's gold that he uh, picked up on the trip and then Here's my goal that I picked up on the trip. It was, uh, I think about an ounce and a third was the total of what I ended up with. When we drove back in, we spent a, a day at visiting the uh, Perth Mint, which was really interesting. Uh, at one time, this is where they minted gold coins from the, the gold that was found in Western Australia. Uh, of course, nobody uh, makes gold coins except for uh, souvenir and collectors. They don't make them for circulation and buying and selling. Um, but the Perth Mint has a, a lot of interesting facilities and a lot of things to see. And, and it's uh, uh, if you're ever in Perth, it's well worth visiting. It was truly an amazing adventure. The Australian people that we met up with were very kind to us. The gold was amazing. The geology, of course, was very different than what I'm used to. It was my first encounter with uh, uh, the greenstone, ironstone, hosted gold. I later encountered more of this when I took my trips to Africa to prospect there. But um, the geology was very different and very interesting. The stars and the flora and the fauna were very different. Uh, one of the first nights I was there, I looked up and tried to figure out by the stars where I was and of course eventually uh, I found a constellation that I recognized and of course it was in a completely wrong part of the sky instead of being way to the north it was um, you know way to way well it was it was in a, in a completely different part of the sky unexpected um, and I is a funny story I'm the first of my line to return to Australia as my great great grandfather was an Australian who was murdered for the gold and silver he was carrying. He was uh, uh, a manager at a mine in uh, in the Golden Triangle area of Australia, which is not where we were, but he was in the Golden Triangle. And in those days, uh, miners were paid with the gold and silver coin. You, you didn't write people a check that they took to a bank and deposited, as we might do today. Um, the miners were paid off what they were owed in gold and silver uh, in coin of the realm and my great great grandfather was carrying back the uh, the payroll and he was ambushed and murdered by some other Australians um, for the gold and silver that he was carrying uh, his son my great grandfather 
uh, eventually was uh, taken to uh, the northeast part of the United States where he was cared for by his aunt, the sister of, of the, the man who was murdered, and raised there. And then that's how my part of that part of the family uh, ended up in the U.S. And of course, I'm the first one to actually return to Australian soil. So uh, if you want to learn more about prospecting and how to find your own gold, uh, check out my book. I have written an encyclopedia of everything you know about prospecting, about panning, sluicing, metal detecting, dry washing, gold geology. It, it's really all in here, different kinds of equipment, how to research areas and find good places to prospect on your own. It's a 350 page book, so there really is the, everything you need to know in here. And it's available now on Amazon. Uh, you can go to Amazon and just enter Fistful of Gold by Chris Ralph, and uh, it'll come up, and you'll be able to make a purchase of that book if you're interested. I also have a, a free website that you can check out uh, with the information on gold and gemstones, prospecting, locations to go. A lot of interesting stuff here on the website. It's at uh, nevadaoutbackgems.com slash prospect slash chrisprospect.htm. That's the URL for it. And uh, I think you'll find this of interest as well. And if you like this presentation and you want to learn more about finding your own gold, I've got a whole lot of gold, silver, and gemstone videos that are coming, uh, both in some slide presentations like this, but really mostly uh, live action videos that are going to be shot out in the field. So click the subscribe button and tick the notification bell and YouTube will let you know when I publish new stuff. Uh, hit the like button and um, let me know your comments because I'm interested in hear what, hearing what you have to say. So hope you enjoyed this presentation and maybe you'll get a chance to prospect across Australia one of these days yourself. It was a really great adventure and I wish you the best of luck in all your prospecting adventures.